boom to the hey, all you sports fans out there in the two sphere, or to you, the individual as part of this collective. Welcome to the OMSR with your brief but very concise host, Will the Alternative ESPN Sports Thrill. Doing an intro show thing at Lingam and Jeans. You know the clipboard coming up. The last two where fours, a couple snapshots, what's coming up? America East Conference. Turner Championship rematch last year with Albany and Stony Brook. Now the format is try to, you know, assuming you know, if this was the first game, then it's probably not going to happen, but uh, if there was an event beforehand, it may cut it short, but trying to bring you the very start of the game, the starting lineups, any interesting tidbits that may come up in the first half, but the on-site commentator team takes you the first half highlights on a whole, and then brings some of the runs, what's happening, changes in momentum, and so forth as to the outcome, and then the very end of the game itself. So you get like a nice little vignette, can't borrow too much from any one source. As opposed to the way I was doing it last year, trying to cover all of the second half in a 12-minute vignette. It's much shorter, a little bit sweeter, and, and it's more precise, more direct. So you get a feel when you're filling out your bracket, you know, like some of these mid-majors. Almost, Tony Brook, not for heaving up. You know, Brick, brick of Stone, free throws there in the second half. Didn't cover all that, but they might work for it. They missed like six, or uh, three sets of two free throws. Put him in a bad way, and so the way this game ended, it was quite the thrill of him. Don't want to ruin it for you. Then we hear from the guys from College Game Day out of ESPN. Can we get some criteria, please, as to the seeding in the tournament? Because this seems to be changing every year as to what we're talking about, especially with regard to the 16s. You know, if the play-in games are for the schools who are just barely scratching the surface shouldn't they get a 16 like last year coastal carolina i'm still bugged about that because i called them to make a bunch of noise got a 16 after the playing games of which minnesota won one of them and they got an 11. i mean too much emphasis given to schools from the big conferences if you're in the playing game that's you're going to be a 16 automatic see the other schools who win their conferences by the way albany or albany as it's pronounced if it's Alberta, Canada, and Alta Ski Resort, why is it Albany, New York? Granted, I, I admit it sounds a little bit better. Uh, they don't have their seven-footer center like they did last year, but they got guys from last year. They were a 15. I kind of called for them to make some noise. They didn't fare so well against the number two. I forget who they were playing last year. This year, maybe. I still got Wofford and Coastal Carolina making the most noise. All right, so that's what's coming up. Thanks for watching. No silly DUIs while you're out there. Reminding you, sports and alcohol, they are joined at the hip. So pace yourself. Roll clip. With Albany, the number one seed, losing at home to Stony Brook, 20-16. to 16. Albany with junior Peter Hooley from Adelaide, Australia. His twin sister, Emma, is watching. It's early Sunday morning in Australia, and she tweeted late first half, these nerves are building. And welcome back to Sefco Arena. I'm Bob Cozy, along with former Providence coach Tim Wells. Ten points were very tough to come by in the first 20 minutes. Well, Albany shot 20%, and Stony Brook started out slow, and Jamil Morney didn't do much early, but he's only one rebound away from the double-double, so you can slow him down, but you really have to concentrate on him the whole game because he will make things happen. He moves around on the floor. Steve Peichel puts him in a lot of different positions, and he makes adjustments according to what's going on defensively. And speaking of Jamil Warney, he's the subject of our Matsubushi inside the play. Well, he's good on the outside, he's good on the inside, he's good right at the rim, but if he's not available, to, if he doesn't find that ability to carve out space, he can go down to that mid-post area down on either side, he's got the counter move, the right hand, and of course the nice smooth lefty jump hook as well. Warney, 5 for 10 from the floor, 2 for 3 from the line, 12 points and 9 rebounds. And also in the first 20 minutes, Tim, Sam Rowley, the first team all league forward, Albany, 0 for 7 from the floor, two personal fouls. So that's good news, bad news from Will Brown, your leading scorer. He's got the, the donut at halftime, but you're only down by four. They're all, their defense has kept them in this game. I'm a good defender. Here are our first half statistics. Albany turned the ball over only twice in the first half, but failed to knock down the three. Cover your eyes. <laughs> good field goal percentage, but good, strong, old school, tough. Man-to-man -man defense, relentless in the lane, and now Albany has to try to see if they can get Sam Rowley going offensively. Tim, since these two teams are accustomed to playing the league championship game, are you surprised that they're not playing a little looser as Sanders gets to the rim? Uh, every year, the 
pressure builds, and this day is a special one. You can throw everything out, the experience included, when you get to this point. The two best players on the floor are right here. You're going to see him offensively versus Neil Warney with the left, a counter move to the middle of the floor, and then his counterpart down the other end, right at you, big fella, coming back with the left as well. Stony Brook, who has never played in an NCAA Division I tournament with a four-point lead over Albany. There's Steve Peichel's wife, Kate. Their four children are also here today. Brooke, John Patrick, Olivia, Kevin. Steve's mom, Mary, is also in the house. Sitting right next to Kate is Steve's brother, Tim, who played with Steve in UConn. He played on a Jim Calhoun team that went to the Elite Eight in 1990, won an NIT championship in 1988. There's Tim Pike, who also went to the NIT in 1989, and Tim, one of the assistant coaches on UConn back then, was Howie Dickenman. He's now the head coach at Central Connecticut. Steve was an assistant under Howie, and for the second year in a row, Howie Dickenman has made it a point to be on hand to watch his pupil play in the American, uh, coach in the American East uh, He's done a tremendous job with this program. Great support at the university. Brand new sparkling arena on campus. Can you imagine he played for that tough Irishman from Boston back in the late 80s, early 90s, back when he was really feisty? His name is J.P. Hansinger. He's five feet tall. He's in sixth grade. He's a 12-year-old at the Acadia Middle School in Clifton Park, New York. He was diagnosed in September of 2013 with Neiman Pick Type C. It's also known as childhood Alzheimer's disease. There's his sister Molly and Sam Rowley before the game, Will Brown also before the game. And Albany announced when they announced that they had signed two other recruits for next year that J.P. Hansinger has signed a national letter of intent. There's the mom, Donna, and the father, Jay. He is an important part of this team. He sits on the bench. He stands with the team during the national anthem. The, uh, the disease, Neiman Pick Type C, Tim, there's no cure for that disease. And it's an example of the Albany basketball program doing a wonderful thing to create some wonderful memories for a young man. Again, just a special story by Albany and their people, with Will Brown and his staff and the people around the program. It makes you really feel that the little things should bother you. And yeah. like he steps out to that almost short corner area, almost to the three-point line. Because he's such a good passer, he's turning. He's a strict passer. He turns and faces against that double from the baseline. Steve Michael has come up empty in his team's three previous trips to the American East Championship game. And I asked him this week, will you mention that to your team? He says, I haven't mentioned it. I won't. First of all, it's a different team than those. And he said, the way I look at it is, when we're good enough to win it, we will. Our history won't matter on Saturday. And Tim Carson Pure Boy is playing like it today in the conference championship. Well, decision making has been an issue at times for Trey Pure Boy, but not today. He has made a lot of things happen on both ends of the floor, running the team precisely, keeping other people involved, but also what he does best, creating off the bounce, getting out of transition off the steal, exploding to the rim, and providing that energy that Stony Brook needs on the road. And when you need a knockdown free, he can present that as well, provide it. 52 weeks ago today, these same two teams met in the American East Championship game. It was a different venue. Sam Rowley had an 18-point game. Stony Brook led by six with seven minutes to go. Carson Purifoy with two of his team high 13. But Albany ended the game on a 23-8 run. This huge three by Peter Hooley with 104 left made it a five-point lead. Albany went on to win 69-60 for its second straight American East title and fourth overall. And today they are trying to join Jim Calhoun's Northeastern Huskies, Bill Herrian's Drexel Dragons, and Tom Brennan's Vermont Catamounts as only the fourth school in American East history to go back to back to back. First shot probably wasn't the one that Will Brown wanted with Sam Rowley shooting a three, but this is one we've seen all season long. And the Albany fans know it. Just when there's nothing there, twisting, turning, tremendous defense, but better offense. So what's the strategy here? And at this point, you've got four, if not six, How long do you, you know, give yourself the chance sets of two free throws missed by Stoney. As that eight-point lead has been trimmed to two, Mike Rowley, a 69% free throw shooter, and he's two for two today. We have a one-point game with 21 seconds left. At 
what point do you foul, Tim? Well, absolutely. You're going to give your press a little bit of a look. See how comfortable they are getting the ball over half court, but it's like Will Brown's going right at him. Timeout, Stony Brook. Will Brown is coming out and doing an awful lot of lobbying on the court with the official replay. Of course, we have had no, we don't know what, there's the timeout call. There's the timeout. It looks like first and foremost, it was Peter Hooley fouled McGrew, but then McGrew trying to get out of the trap in the corner through the elbow. Now Stony Brook's got an issue with inbounding the ball. Not sure where they're going to get it. Probably right off the side of the short corner, but again, they will not be able to move on the baseline. Now, they've had issues getting the ball inbound and feeling comfortable against this pressure when they can run the baseline. So now, how do they get the ball into their ball handler, Trey Purifoy, because he is the only guy that Steve Pike yeah. really can trust. When well, it's subtle push-off the there. strong with the basketball. Now, Stony Brook does have the advantage. They have the possession arrow, so Albany, if they do get It's the third year in a row and the fifth time in its history. In Stony Brook, it's the first time in school history. Missed the second. The Another miss. A two point lead, 15 seconds left, no timeout. They've got to go quickly, though. They've got to get it. On the attack, going to the rim. Sanders, drive for the tie, no good. Rebound comes out to Hooley for the win. 1.6 left. Albany by one. Pure boy is stripped. And Albany is going to the NCAA tournament for the third consecutive year. as balanced uh, a bracket as we possibly can and that bodes well for trying to put whoever is the worst if you will of the two seeds uh, against Kentucky if at all possible if the committee can do it they will all right Greg always gives us great insight he'll be with us throughout the weekend and leading up to the unveiling of the bracket I want to go back to the first thing that Greg talked about in terms of having more time uh, to evaluate the, the one seeds and two seeds. Is that putting too much emphasis in your judgment on, on one day, one night of basketball, sir? Well, I think when you get to this time of the year, you're, you're basically splitting hairs. Not that I know much about splitting hairs. <laughs> <laughs> you have not. <laughs> exactly. But you've got to find reasons why you're going to slide a team up and slide a team down. So what do you do? You take all the information available, and all the information available includes the games that are played this weekend. So I think you've got to take that into consideration. But the, you, by now you have a feel for a team's body of work and just how good a team is. Why don't we just come up with set, uh, set criteria that determines whether you belong in or you don't belong in? You know what I mean? Or this is what the set criteria is for a number one seed. I feel like each year we're having different discussions because it's subjective between all the committee members. It changes. Well, I, I don't think the, sub, uh, the subjectivity is bad, actually. I think they have to have some wiggle room to be able to make their own judgments. The complaint I've always had, and I know committee members take this as a slight, and I don't mean it as that, is that when you're asking people to make basketball judgments, they ought to have a basketball background in order to be the best possible, to make the best possible decisions. I think the committee does a terrific job, but it could be a better job. And what, when they have, they've said over the years, boy, having Carol Williams, who's a, a brilliant basketball mind, or Dave Gavin of one of the great greatest of all time on the committee has been invaluable. Okay, well, if having one of them's on there is invaluable, how about we have 10? That would be great. Let's have 10 more.